Hey everyone, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity to be here today. Thanks to the panel organizers and my fellow panelists for pulling this together. And thanks to ICA for giving us the chance to talk about this year's conference theme that is open communication. My name is Richard Husky. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Communication at University of California, Davis. I'm here to talk to you about uh, emerging areas in communication research and their connection to open communication. And uh, I'm here to tell you today that I am a research parasite. What do I mean by that? Well, this is a term that actually comes from a 2016 editorial published in the New England Journal of Medicine, where two authors articulate a view about data sharing. They argue that data sharing works well when uh, the data that are analyzed uh, test a novel hypothesis, that when uh, data sharing works well when new teams collaborate with existing teams, particularly the existing teams that collected the data, and importantly, these two teams publish together. By comparison, data sharing works poorly or doesn't go well when new teams analyze the data for their own ends, when new teams, quote, steal the data uh, or steal the productivity of the team that originally collected the data. And then finally, when new teams try to disprove or otherwise discredit results from the earliest, uh, earlier publications. And so we can look at these and start to say, wow, these seem like really normative takes on how to do science. Uh, how do we evaluate these normative claims? Is there a framework? And fortunately, there is. In fact, we can look to Merton's uh, framework for understanding scientific norms, where he argues there's basically four norms in the field of science or in scientific enterprise. Universalism, that is, evaluate the science, not the scientist. Communality, that is the data, methods, and results uh, of science are not belonging to any one individual, but instead they're community goods. The third, disinterestedness. Self-interest should not shape scientific inquiry. And then lastly, skepticism, logic, peer review, replication. These are the tools of the scientific enterprise. And so with these in mind, we can reevaluate this data sharing editorial article and actually come to the conclusion that Merton's norms require research parasites. And today I'm going to tell you about two uh, research areas, uh, research initiatives that actually are built around what we might call a parasite model that have been uh, incredibly successful for knowledge generation. The first is known as the Human Connectome Project. It comes from the field of cognitive neuroscience, and it's organized to understanding uh, the relationship between structure and function in the human brain. And uh, this is a series of more than 20 research studies, each containing multiple data sets, comprised of participants ranging from newborns to adults over the age of 90 years old. It's generated a massive amount of data and has already generated a lot of uh, research publications as well. More than 6,000 downloads uh, of the data sets have been uh, uh, completed as of 2016. And as of 2016, there's been more than 140 publications. I can tell you that this number has probably tripled, if not quadrupled, uh, since, this, uh, since 2016. And lastly, it includes a number of open tools that assist researchers in data collection and analysis, which helps advance the speed at which the science occurs and the quality of the science, I should say. Looking at the field of computational social science, there is something known as GDAL, or the Global Database of Events, Language, and Tone. This is a spatial temporal database that uh, takes textual documents, web documents, video, broadcast media dating back to the 1800s and combines it with the world metadata, whether it be where an event occurred, who was involved in the event, and so on. Uh, as of today, there's been more than 100 publications using data from the GDALT project. And there are open source tools for working with the data set, including one recently published by Hopp and colleagues called PyCore. And so to sum up, I would say that working in these emerging areas actually requires us to be uh, research parasites. We're areas that embrace the research parasite model. And in doing so, we share our tools, we share our data, and this lets us have a strong emphasis on reliability and validity, validity when it comes to both our measurements and the data that we've gathered. It results in a greater than the, uh, the uh, whole of our knowledge generation is greater than the sum of its individual parts. Uh, we can generate knowledge rapidly. We can work on projects collect, com, uh, both collaboratively or competitively, which is uh, quite useful for theory testing and theory refinement. And importantly, it's an opportunity for us to make our models a little less wrong 
in a little more useful. So with that, I'll say thank you very much uh, for your time. Please steal my stuff. Uh, data and code for my projects are available on my lab's Open Science Framework page and GitHub page. I'd be thrilled if you were able to use it in your own research enterprise and endeavors. Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to the panel discussion.